Okay, if you have been thinking about whether you should be upgrading to the latest MacBook Pro, I would say just do it. You won't regret it because for professional users or even for amateur users like me, these MacBooks will take your productivity to the next level. But before we get into the details and you know, I'm sure you know a lot of specifications, but let's just take a look at the unboxing first. Okay, now we have the MacBook Pro 14 inch. We're gonna be opening that first. I do have the 16 inch coming up later, but this is the MacBook Pro 14 inch. And it comes in the wonderful space gray and there's another one which is silver, but I got a space gray version. And of course, next we have the accessories inside and that is the MagSafe 3 cable, which is braided. And of course, some paperwork which we have, but importantly, there is the black, Apple sticker which just looks and feels wonderful full. and of course the power adapter with the uh, 67 watts for this guy and the 3 pin connector that we just plug into the power adapter and they have an USB-C version and of course there is a wonderful space grey 14 inch MacBook Pro and now we have the 16 inch MacBook Pro this actually comes in at about 3700 compared to 2999 for the 14 inch macbook pro again this is space gray and you have the usual leaflet sticker but this is a 140 watt charger okay it also comes with the braided massive cable and there you have it that's your 16 inch and the 14 inch macbook pro okay so to start things off first everything about the macbook pros are new you have a new design you have a new screen you have a new keyboard you have a new speaker system you have a new uh, enclosure, you have new ports, and, or should I say the return of the ports. And let's talk about the design first. Okay, first off, the design, it actually harks back to the old uh, PowerBook G-Force that had a similar design. That means it's more boxy compared to the flat edge designs of the, the recent MacBooks. So, well, to me, function over form, or should I say, not, not form over function, right? Okay, I prefer function over form, which in this case means that I get a much better performing MacBook rather than something that because of design, you need to cut some corners and you don't get the performance that a pro model should have. If I were to talk about the 16-inch model, which, oh yes, I have a 16.2-inch and the 14.2-inch. Yes, it's not just 16 and 14. Well, let me just try hold this again. Okay, so well you can see here, 14.2 and the 16.2 inch on my left. So um, let me just try to pull out my 2018 MacBook Pro. Well, I would say both have similar kind of a weight or heft to it. A, a, just maybe a tad heavier for the 16 inch model. But in terms of the outlook, uh, well, as I mentioned before, the design of the 2018 MacBook Pros has a slimmer or tapered off edge where the latest MacBook Pros have a more rectangular or squared off corners, right? So again, whether this is something that will bother you is really up to your personal preference. But at this moment, no, it's, I prefer function over form as I mentioned earlier. So. Let's look at the screen. Okay, so screen wise, the most obvious feature or the addition would be the notch. Let's talk about the notch first. Because of this notch, Apple actually made the bezels, I think about 60% thinner, but they had to retain this notch. This notch is to house the uh, front facing camera, which has been upgraded finally to a proper one. Um, I think it's similar to the iMac models. It's now a 1080p with a f2.0 camera, which means to say better low light performance and sharper images. So this is something good for people who video conference a lot and want to look better on the, the camera. So now this guy can allow you to do so. So that is why you have this notch there. And Apple decided to push the screen right up to the edges uh, leaving just a little bit of gap, but they had to retain the notch to keep the camera there. 
So that is the screen. And oh, yes, the screen is now um, 120 hertz ProMotion adaptive display. So it ranges from 24 hertz to 120 hertz depending on your usage. If you need more, it will generate just like the the iPhone 13 Pros, which you have the ability to uh, conserve battery as much as possible. But at the same time, when you need the screen resolution, you'll be able to churn it out for you. And the screen itself is a liquid retina XDR, which basically is a mini LED kind of a screen system, which has 10,000 mini LEDs there, which gives you better contrast, better blacks or brighter white. So I'm going to test it out and I'm going to see for myself to compare to my 2018 MacBook Pro. But I do believe that this will be a similar experience to what you experience on the iPad Pros, which is silky smooth screens and more vibrant and deeper images. And for the keyboard area, you would have noticed the touch bar is no longer there. This has been brought many times in a lot of videos. The touch bar is something that doesn't matter for me because I only use it occasionally for increasing or lowering the volume or even just adjusting the brightness. So without that there, I would prefer much to have all the full-size function keys back. And of course, the Touch ID still remains on this corner here. And the Touch ID, interestingly, has a little bit of a concave. I guess this is more for intuitive placement. So for the MacBook Pro, the previous model, I think it was a flat edge compared to the latest Touch ID. So again, this new keyboard is of the mechanical type, which is similar to the Magic Keyboard that uh, Apple is selling as well. So it's no longer the scissor style keyboard, which had a bit of a bad rap in terms of reliability. So I guess most people would be happy to use this and well, let me test it out and see whether does it really feel better and if the travel is much better than the previous version. But honestly, I didn't really have any problem with the scissor style, unlike for some other users. So well, there you have it. No more touch ID, better keyboard. Okay, now the thing that most pro users are really excited about when Apple announced this during their keynote was the return of the ports. Yeah, 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 it's, it's odd, you know. Why did Apple go and re remove all the ports? Yeah, my MacBook Pro had four USB-C ports and that's it. Yes, I could charge all four of them, uh, charge my MacBook using either one of the four ports, but that's it, you need to, to have a dongle. And as a pro user or an amateur user like me, we definitely enjoy the return of all these ports. And we have the HDMI port which makes its return here. And you have a USB-C or Thunderbolt 4 on one side. And the SD card slot. Oh my gosh, this is the one that really uh, made me or made most pro users or amateur users decide to upgrade. <laughs> yes, it's funny just for the SDR, no, but honestly for all the ports involved. But this SD card slot is very, very useful and helpful, right? I don't have to pull out the dongle anymore or bring the dongle out with me. And we should, our cameras, you generally always use SD card slot. So with this, I just need to take out the SD card slot, put it in. Yes, maybe some people may use other kind of cards, but at the end of the day, most of us still use the SD card slot, which, well, it's there now and it's much more convenient for us. And on the other side, you have the you have two more USB-C or Thunderbolt 4 ports and the return of the MagSafe tree. So some of you may not be aware, MagSafe, uh, I think it's way back even other models where they had, oh, I think my daughter's uh, MacBook Air is still using the MagSafe. Okay, so basically what MagSafe does is in case um, you're plugged in and you trip over the the cable, but you don't pull the whole MacBook along with it. So it will just detach because it's only just attached to it magnetically. So let's look at it. Can see, right? So the MagSafe attaches magnetically to the port itself. So this will enable you in, in case of an accident, you just pull out without the, the whole MacBook Pro being put away, okay? So that is the MagSafe tree. And talking about the charging wise, um, you can also still charge your MacBook uh, using either of the USB-C ports rather than using the MagSafe tree. So that is 
fantastic to know because if you are outside or you didn't bring your MagSafe cable, you can easily just use a USB-C cable, somebody's place where they have a USB-C port, they, I mean like the power brick and you can charge your MacBook Pros as well. And of course, we have the headphone jack. So why is so special about this headphone jack? Now it allows the usage of high impedance headphones, which means that good quality headphones for pro users will be able to enjoy this new port. So we have finished talking about the externals. Now I want to talk about the performance or the internals of the MacBook Pros. So the 14 inch comes with a eight core CPU, 14 core GPU, that's the base model. You can of course increase it to the 16 um, core. Uh, GPUs and 10 core CPUs as well, but the base models are as of here 512 uh, SSD hard drive. Uh, you also get to enjoy 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth for the M1 Pros model. And for the 16 inch, you have 10 core GPU, oh sorry, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, the same 512 gigabyte SSD hard drive and also the same uh, 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth and that's because these both these models are the M1 Pros they are the base model so if you want you can spec both of them up to M1 Max and you can get up to 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth and both these models have 16 gigabyte unified memory and one thing about the SSD performance is that it's now rated at 7.4 gigabytes per second. So it's almost double the previous versions. In fact, my um, my old 2018 MacBook Pro, I guess only clocks about less than 3000. So definitely the new models will clock more than that, but I will do a benchmark later to have a look at that. And the speaker or the sound system now has four force cancelling woofers and two tweeters. And the speakers are all along the sides here, and I believe the tweeters are at the four, the two corners here. And uh, it is supposedly giving us also spatial audio, which is similar to what the what you hear on the AirPods Pro. Basically, it creates a 3D sound stage for you using the MacBook Pro speaker. So that's quite interesting. So I want to see how it's effect. I know for the AirPods Pro, you can get the effect very distinctly, but I'm not sure how it's going to sound on the laptop because you have open air environments like that. So it'll be interesting to know about the audio performance. And because of the design of the enclosure or the unibody design of the latest MacBook Pros, the power or the battery life is amazing. It's rated to be at 17 hours video playback for the 14 inch model which by comparison, the 13-inch model only managed 10 hours and the 16-inch model will give you, wait, let's see, 21 hours of video playback compared to, I think, 11 hours of the previous, maybe the 16-inch model for comparison. So that's a whopping 10 hours improvement. And you get 24, 21 hours, literally the whole day you can use this out. So if battery life is crucial for you, in fact, both of these models will do, but this will give you that extra juice up to 21 hours. I'm, I'm still amazed at that, that it can provide that much. Um, I'm just excited if I were to bring this out and like basically it could last my entire day, but with some heavy video work, will it? But well, let's see. Okay, I'm going to be doing some benchmarks. We're going to look at, at the Blackmagic disk speed test maybe some gig bench results and actual file transfer speeds. And more importantly, I want to show how fast it can export a file in Final Cut Pro um, using a 4K ProRes file and see whether is the performance much, much faster compared to my 2018 MacBook Pro. So let's have a look. Okay, now we are running the Blackmagic disk speed test. So on the 16 inch, we are not really clocking that much as expected, but I guess it's due to efficiency. So we are getting about 5,003 there, thereabouts for the uh, read speeds and the write speeds are healthy 4,006. So definitely much, much better than the previous version. 
or the previous MacBook. And the uh, 14 inch, as expected, performs similarly. About 4003 to 4004, it depends. Sometimes you throttle up a bit. And for the read speeds, they are also at 5200 thereabouts. So they are both at good speeds. And for my 2018 MacBook Pro, I'm getting about less than half of the speeds of the uh, MacBook Pros. So you can see here, I'm getting about 2003, 2005. And for the MacBook Pros with the M1 chip, I'm getting about 5002 to 5004. Okay, I just ran the Geekbench and on my MacBook Pro expected, the single core is at 1000 and the multi-core is at 5000 and let's look at the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Let me just bring down. Okay, so the 16 inch MacBook Pro has a single core at 1007. I would expect the 14 inch to have similar because it's the same chip. So the single core performance should be the same. But the multi-core for the 16 inch will be higher because it has 10 cores compared to the 8 cores on the 14 inch base model and for the graphics performance uh 2018 macbook pro clocking in at 18,008, and the 16 inch we should get it much better compared to 14 inch so the 16 inch is at the 34,005. this guy has um 16 core gpu so let's look at this which has a 14 core gpu on the MacBook Pro 14 inch model. So yes, the performance will be slightly worse off compared to the 16 inch due to the number of cores in the GPUs. Okay, I have the uh, 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro, the M1 Pro here, the 15 inch 2018 Intel MacBook Pro, and of course the 14 inch MacBook Pro again with the M1 Pro chip. So uh, these guys all have 16 gigabyte of RAM. I'm running Final Cut Pro 10.6 uh, on all of them, the latest version. And I also have the background renders turned off, so they are not pre-rendering anything in the background. And I'm going to be using the Apple ProRes 422 video codec here and the file size is estimated to be about 33 gigabyte. So I want to see in a general situation when I start to export files how long it would take and how we improve my workflow and let's try it out now. Okay, done. Finally, it took almost more than, okay, it's about five times more, five minutes and 39 seconds and finally it got there. So, these two are really powerhouses and I'm just really amazed at the power of the M1 Pros. Well, I'm sure those benchmarks blew you away and those were just the normal benchmarks which I did. I guess many videos online would have done even more detailed benchmarks and comparisons. But for me, this is a wonderful machine for day-to-day -day work, for what I do for in my free time, you know, what I like to do, video editing stuff, doing videos like this, and in fact, giving me the chance to reduce my productivity or time as much as possible will certainly help. So, I hope you do like this video, and if you can decide, well, now this is the difference between a 16-inch and a 14-inch, so the key is whether do you need that additional real estate or does the 14 inch do for you both because both are still powerhouses and if you really don't need even more power go for the m1 max well that's it for my video i thank you for watching it i hope you like subscribe and hit that notification button and i'll see you in the next video peace